from you without a claim except the blood of Jesus was shed for our sin, for our redemption. To bring us into unity with God. To break down the middle wall of partition that was against us, that was contrary to us, to blot out all the handwriting of ordinances. Well, I know Paul was speaking about the law, but when I read it, I see my sin being blotted out by the blood of Jesus, by the Lamb and your sacrifice on the day. Lord, we come to you, Lord, as your sheep and your people. We come to you with no righteousness of our own, but we desire to worship you in spirit and in truth. We desire to be vessels of honor, sanctified, and meat of the Master's use. Lord, we ask you to purge us, but not with hyssop, but with the blood of the Lamb, by the word. We said, now you clean through the word that I've spoken unto you. We take your word as I clean it. We take your spirit, your sanctification. Father of heaven, we ask you to meet our need on the day. We put our eyes and our attentions on you. Father, every need in the house of God today that none would be left unmet on this morning. God, that you would move for Mike's little grandbaby, four months old, got cancer, going through chemo. Lord, you're a healer. Lord, you heal all manner of disease among the people. They said you did all things well when you were here on earth. Yes. God heal this baby, yes. Lord. We speak your word. We see your word of healing. It's a little four month old body, Lord, that you would deliver. We curse every cancer sin. And a little body, this little body, Lord, that you would let it dry up and shrivel up. By the name of Jesus, Satan, we speak to you. We speak to you. Curse it in the name of Jesus Christ. Command all these cancer cells to be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, Pastor Robinson, Mount Olive, Lord, had surgery and they nicked her colon, his colon. And they believe they can't stop the bleeding, but you can stop the bleeding. Let your blood stop that blood. Oh, your healing and your deliverance. We send your word to this pastor. Lord, the devil would like nothing more than to smite the shepherd where the sheep would scatter, but Lord, heal this pastor. We sing your word, Lord, touch that body. That body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, Lord, and you would heal and make it everywhere whole. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, and every person in this assembly that's sick and battered, or some's going through situations, some so distracted, they can hardly get their minds on you, they can hardly pray. Oh, we need a miracle. Oh, we need a revival. Oh, we need the Holy Ghost. Oh, we need your spirit. Oh, my God. We need your spirit to come in our situation. Turn things, God, by the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord, God, pull down every stronghold. It's only you are able. But we don't depend on our own weapons. We depend on those spiritual weapons. You said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Oh, we believe in you, Lord, to meet every need. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand. I bless you. Amen. Thank you so much for praying with us. Praise the Lord Jesus. I just appreciate the Lord. Everybody's glad for Jesus. I'm glad for Jesus. Amen. If it hadn't been for Jesus, amen. I don't know where I would be or what I would be if the Lord hadn't saved me. Amen. We're none of us able to boast of who we are. Paul said, I am what I am by one thing. What was it? The grace of God. Anything that's in you that's good. The Bible says every good and perfect gift is from above. Is that right? Comes down from the Father of mine, to whom is no merit, neither shadow of turn. And then he said, of his own will, he begot us through the word of truth. Amen. One scripture say, it is he who has saved us. And made us and not we ourselves. Yes. Amen. I thank God for Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Appreciate Brother Evangelist. Oh, y'all like that good anointed singing this morning? Yes. 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 Y'all like to hear some good anointed preaching? Yes. He'll be preaching next Saturday morning. 
Amen. If you're going to make it, you're going to have to pray your yes, way through. Amen. Through this darkness. The only way to get through this darkness is to pray your way through. Amen. 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 You ain't going to sing your way through it. You ain't going to shout your way through it. You're going to pray your way through this. Amen. Anybody that's going to come out on the other side with a victory is going to come out because they prayed and sought the Lord. Amen. Not that your own righteousness does it, but prayer keeps me in communication with God. Amen. When I would fall, when I would be weary, when my knees would stumble. Amen. God strengthens me while I'm on my knees. Amen. You want to get a tune up in your knees, you got to get down on your knees. And God will strengthen your feeble knees. Amen. Knees get feeble because they don't bend. Amen. Amen. I need the Lord to help me always pray. Oh, yes. And not to faint. And don't go back to your old way. Amen. I'll tell you something. You got two men that's fighting every day. They go out and fight the battle. One is 120 pounds, the other is 250 pounds. And that little 120 pound fella, he'll probably lose the fight every day they go out and fight. But I guarantee you, you start feeding that 120 pound guy, steak and potatoes and greens, and start starving that 250 pound guy, it ain't gonna happen overnight, but eventually that 120 pound guy gets stronger and stronger. And that 250 pound guy get weaker and weaker and weaker. This is the way it is in the spirit. If you starve your flesh, and feed your spirit, man. A lot of people get discouraged because, well, I prayed all night, nothing didn't turn around. You keep on praying, feeding that spiritual man. Yeah. He'll get stronger and stronger. Amen. And that flesh man get weaker and weaker. Won't he do it? Yeah. He'll get weaker and weaker. The more you starve him, the weaker he'll get. Yeah. The more you feed him, the stronger he'll get. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. The reason people faint is because they sold to the flesh. And Paul said in Galatians, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. Yes. But if you sow to the Spirit, he says, you shall reap life everlasting. Yes. You know? And it's not just what we do here once, twice a week, some of us only here. It's not what we just do here, but it's what you do when you're not here. Amen. It makes a difference in your salvation. Right. This just prepares you, sister boy, for the rest of the week. This carries you to Wednesday. And some of y'all got to Get enough today to last you to next Saturday. We won't see you no more. <laughs> you know, so you got to pack it all in. Make sure you got your listening ears on today. But you got to pack in enough to last you to next Saturday. Some of you in the city, maybe till Tuesday. But it's what you do with it when you get home that makes a difference. Ain't that what James said? He said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Doing what? Who are you fooling? You ain't fooling the master. You're deceiving your own self. Yes. Amen. You got to apply this word when you get home. Yes. That's what makes the difference in your spiritual walk. That's what the Lord has graced me to be saved for 32 years. Amen. Because he, I was taught when I was 14 to apply the word of God yes. when I wasn't in church. Yes. Amen. To seek God and pray. Yes. And that's how you find favor with the Lord. Amen. How many want to find a favor? Amen. Amen. You know, Mary was highly favored. And she gave birth to a Jesus reminder. And anybody that God favors is going to give birth to a Jesus reminder. How many of y'all want to give birth to Christ? Paul said in Galatians, he said, when God separated me from my mother's womb, he did it with a purpose to reveal his son in me. And that's what all this is about. Y'all didn't know that y'all thought this is about church and going. This is about you becoming Jesus. This is about you being transformed into that image you see in that mirror of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what this is for. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. Amen. I thank God. You know, God deserves praise and honor even when things aren't going well in your life. Amen. Come on, give him a good praise. If you got extra trials, give them an extra prayer. If you got extra burdens, open your mouth and give them an extra prayer. Give them a sacrifice prayer. If the devil been fighting you real hard, why don't you open your mouth and give God some extra praise? Amen. Amen. Naked, I came out of my mother's womb, and naked, I'm going to return to the Blessed be the name the Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name. I'm going to bless the Lord in all time. His praise. Amen. He's worthy of 
praise. Oh, give him one more praise. Bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord has done great things for me. Where am I in life? You see, Sister Tilly. Sister Tilly, you didn't quit your job. They let you off. You quit. Okay. Praise the Lord. It changes us. Mama says she's ready to quit. I told them I'd go to church on Saturday. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Work things out. He do it. Amen. If you want to be in the house of the Lord, he'll make a way for you to get here. Amen. If it's your desire to be here, the Lord will make a way. Good to see brother and sister Carter from. I can't never remember Ohio, Iowa, Idaho. Amen. Amen. I told her, I said, y'all might have to move home and save money on gas. Yes, they come so often. Praise the Lord. But I always desire to be in the house of the Lord. And I thank God for it. I thank God for the traditions that he placed here. And it calls us to have a heart to walk after him. And though others are going contrary. You know, and sometimes people have success for a season, walking contrary to the tradition, but it's not going to last. Amen. This this way has been proven. The way of holiness has been proven. Amen. I know people people are going many different ways right now. Amen. And it looks like your success in church building and thousands of souls. Here we can barely, you know, get 120 in here on Saturday morning. And, you know, it looks like. You know, that way, but God is going to bear witness to one thing, and that's the truth. That's the word. And I was telling him the other day, Lord, you got to confirm your word. That's right, that's right. Amen. That's it's God that confirms the word. I, I can't confirm it. He has to say, Amen. This is my word. The Bible says they went everywhere preaching the word. The Lord doing what? Working with them. Doing what was he doing? He was confirming the word with signs. Following. That's what we need. That's going to make a difference. And you can preach holiness to you blue in the face. They tell you in the Old Testament, you're under the law, teaching people. This ain't the law. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it. This holiness of Jesus fulfills all the Old Testament. Amen. It fulfills all. God didn't call us. Amen. Be closer to the world. Just say we're not under the law. Amen. Holiness is holiness. Always has been. Always will be. Amen. When God called people into holiness, he called them out of the world. Amen. Be ye separate. Amen. Touch not the unclean things. Is that what he said? Amen. I'll receive you. I'll be a father to you. You should be my sons and daughters. And then Paul went on to say, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. Oh God, help me. But let's take us back to Wednesday night now. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and, this is the one that gives it body, and spirit. Perfect and holy. You can perfect holiness in the fear of God. Lord, help me to fear you. I don't fear God like I should. I want to walk softly and fear him all the day. I fear him. I know he's done. But I know I don't fear him like I ought to. Amen. When you fear God like you ought to, you're not just concerned about the stuff folks can see. You're concerned about what's in that heart. That can't nobody prove you doing wrong when you really tremble at his word. He said, that's the man I look to, the one that trembles at my word. That the fear of the Lord is in that heart. Amen. And God will show us how. And I'm a man. The Lord help me. I appreciate Brother Parker back there. He's going to set up a Revival in St. Francis County, where I get to preach to some sinners. What a time. Somebody hungry for the word. I'm going to do it. Get up, boy. Time to go to church. You know we got to go. I'm going to stay home, too. But come on. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so. Hey, when you go out there among sinners, the only one who want to be there is the one who want to be there. Praise yes. the Lord. I thank God that you came, pressed your way. I told somebody last week, well, I said, okay, they ain't here. <laughs> I said, why was you late? You didn't work today, why was you late? Well, at least I showed up. <laughs> I said, if I was passing out $1,000 bills every moment, starting at 6 o'clock, what time did you get there? Oh! 
You know how Peter had to sit. Because he wanted to have Oh, I, I see. That's hitting too many people. It's, it's fine when it's hitting there. But when it's hitting all. But I'll tell you, when you, when you love people, you, you'll be late sometimes. I know that. Sometimes you just can't help being late. But you want to be late. I had to try to smooth that one over because I lost it around that last turn. <laughs> but when you want to be in the house of the Lord, you said, if the first be a willing mind, he said, I'll accept it. According to what you have, not according to what you don't have. Sometimes you just can't do it. Amen. But when you have that willing mind, that's what the Lord, I believe, receives. He looks at the heart. Sometimes people hear all the time and it ain't getting nowhere. <laughs> Amen. But I tell you what, I'm going to have my heart right with the Lord. Amen. I'm praying God pray to me a clean heart. Every once in a while I go read that Psalm 51. I read it in last night. Pray to me a clean heart. Oh God, renew a right spirit in me. I don't want to ever get to the place where I'm thinking, God, I'm all right. Amen. I don't need no help. I need his help. I need his mercies. I need his grace. I always need him. So y'all think I'm up here preaching. You know, I ain't up here preaching this holiness because I'm perfect. I'm preaching this holiness because it's the truth. Yes, right. Amen. I'm striving. Amen. 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 We ain't out there fornicating, jacking up things, but we all got some things in our spirit that ain't like God. Yes, right. Amen. I got to preach, you know, like we was preaching on Wednesday night. You got to preach the word. Yes, when it's in season, you got to preach the word when it hits you something. Yes, Amen. 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 You got to declare all the counsel of God. Amen. You cannot be partial in the law. Amen. Amen. Paul said, y'all bear with us. I haven't failed to declare unto you. I have told y'all everything God told me. Paul said, I put it out. And that's what I'm trying to do. Amen. Sometimes this word hit me too. Y'all think I'm just hitting y'all. Amen. But sometimes the word hit me too. Amen. The preacher got to say out sometimes. Hey, you up there preaching against me. Sometimes I'm up here preaching against me. Y'all just don't know. <laughs> Amen. He's the Lord. The preacher, the word, the word, the real word of God hits everybody. Amen. Amen. The real word of God hits everybody. That's, that's what it's designed. It's supposed to go out there and hit everybody, hit everything. Amen. The preacher ain't supposed to preach what he sees. He's supposed to preach what he hears from God. Amen. When he preach what he hears from God, that word has a way of finding you right there. I mean, I mean, sometimes this word, sometimes I get a little slow and I can't get no word, but I come get testimony, man, that word, and the people, this word will find you. It's quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It appears to the divine asunder of soul and spirit. Yeah, man, it'll cut you open like a filleted fish. Put your soul on one side, your spirit on the other. Let you see yourself. <laughs> Amen. It's got to be like that. Man, God, hell, hold that mirror up in front of you. That what I look like. I thought I was looking pretty good. Finally, you got spinach in your teeth, your hair not combed, stuff coming out, you know. You need a mirror to show you something. Sometimes folk ain't going to tell you. Amen. I appreciate the Lord for the word of God. It's been my constant. It's been my main source. It's been my rock. Amen. Since I was a kid. Amen. I always fall on this stone. And amen. It breaks me sometimes, but if I fall on it, it saves me from having it fall on me. Because if it falls on you, it grinds me out. Amen. So he said, you fall on it. Ain't that what he said? Amen. You voluntarily. Lord, I put myself in this world. Amen. Don't let it fall on you. Amen. You get broken sometimes. And it's good to be broken. It's good for this world. I'm going to chastise you. Amen. That's how I was raised. I don't know how y'all was raised, but I was raised and I got plenty of whoopings. Amen. Me and Brother Ricky and Sister Amy and Brother Carter, we know about that. Y'all young, but y'all know about that. Amen. <laughs> we got plenty of whoopings. And you got your shirt too? Amen. I tell you, it's good, it's good for them. They kept us saved. Amen. We love God so much, we came back for some more. They have to sit on your show and say, he out there preaching. He know he wrong. Amen. But somewhere you pray through and the Holy Ghost show you, you wrong. <laughs> Anybody ever had the Holy Ghost show? Well, amen. I've had, I've had, I've gone through my season. 
that's why I learned. I, I, man, I don't, I don't, y'all excuse my, my slang. I don't trip off folks that's mad at me. But I learned what it is to be mad at pastor without call. I've been mad with a call. I've been mad without a call. I had to get over both of them. <laughs> I had to get over both of them. Amen. Because pastors are human beings too. I had to get over both of them. I said, I know I'm right, I know he's wrong. You still got to get over it. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I've been times I, I just knew I was wrong. But turned out when I learned and got some experience, I found out he was right. right. Emotions don't make you right. Attitude don't make you right. Right is right, wrong is wrong. And never the twain shall be. <laughs> Amen. But I thank God for loving this word. You know, you got to love the truth. It's dangerous, but you got to receive the love of the truth. Right. Amen. If you're gonna make it, because the truth, my grandma used to say, truth hurt. Yes, it Amen. That's what she said. You remember Mother Brady said she said truth hurt. Yes, she would she talk about you. That's why we all got sharp tongues. <laughs> Mother Brady had a sharp tongue. Oh, you think she's just a sweet little old lady. <laughs> Couldn't see. She couldn't see nothing but a twenty dollar bill. <laughs> she could see that money. She couldn't see nothing else. She could tell twenty from fifty any day of the week, twice on Sunday. But she cut you with that tongue. I guess that was just put in us. Amen. So I'm having to get the Holy Ghost to tame my tongue. Anybody need the Holy Ghost to help tame that tongue? Amen. Yeah. Amen. I don't need a little dullness to it. Stop cutting people. Amen. I've cut people with my tongue. I knew I was doing it. Act like I didn't know I was doing it, you know, but knew when I was doing it. When I was doing it. Well, I'm telling on myself. You know how you act innocent? Like that little precious moment figurine with the big doleful eyes. I'm just as innocent. No, you're guilty. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. It doesn't put it up with Michael Grady. Praise the Lord. Amen. But we're going to go into the Word on today and try to talk to you about some things that hopefully is helpful. The Lord is my help. Yes. Thank God. Yes. To Jeremiah, I'm glad for everybody being in the service yes. on today. To Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. And this is a community to everybody. This is just a little supplement scripture. I'm going to the, get to the main lady. Jeremiah. 29 verse 10. But thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished in battle, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected and, and all the way over to First Samuel. I might use a lot of this First Samuel day. Me and my wife have been enjoying this First Samuel the last three days. First Samuel 17. Starting at verse 25. The men of Israel said, Speaking about the lion, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to divide to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach of Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, he said, Why camest thou down 
hidden. And with whom is thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Father, thank you for these scriptures. I ask you to give us a few minutes of utterance. But it doesn't have to be a long time as long as your word has free course and accomplished what you ordained for today. God, you are the only one that can open the door of utterance. That we might speak your word as we ought to speak and make it manifest. Father, I ask you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And put on this tape, Brother Marco, from that verse 29, is there not a cause? And you see in the reading here that David's oldest brother, Eliab, becomes angry. Jesse has sent the youngest son down to the battle to take a present and food to take a pledge of his brother to see how they do see how the battle is going and Eliab is not liking the fact that he's left a few sheep and has come down to see the battle probably was embarrassed you know a little bit because all Israel all the valiant men and don't make no mistake these are valiant men this is his brother's was Big strapping. I mean, Samuel was impressed by Eliab, impressed by the other ones, you know, above David. These are these were men of valor. These were, you know, but all of them shaking in their boots and hiding. Have you seen this man that's come out to defy the armies of Israel? Are you looking at what we're going through right now? It's probably a little bit embarrassed, you know. By the fact that they're all happy. Why are you out here, David? I know how naughty you are. You come to see the battle. You're not just coming to bring a present of cheese and bread. You're coming to find out what's going on. David said, what have I done wrong? Basically is what he's saying in verse 29. What have I done wrong? He said, is there not a cause? Yes. Is there not a reason? Yes. You know, and I know in his spirit, he's saying, why in the world are y'all running from this uncircumcised Philistine? Don't y'all know who's on your side? Don't you know who fights for you when you go out to fight? You don't go out to fight by yourself, but the Lord fights for you. Don't you know that when you're facing a situation that looks like, my God, you can't get through it. Don't you know that you have help with you? Why are you hanging your head? Why are you running from this thing? He said you should be out there confronting this thing. And David, in his spirit, he realized, God, this ain't the right way things ought to be. Your people ought not to be hiding and running from dangerous, bad, impossible situations. But he said, Paul said, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. What is he saying? No matter what situation you're faced with, God has already given you the victory. It may not look like it right now, but the there's always a reason God allows things to happen. God's got a reason. He's got a cause. And it may look like God, there's no way I can get through this. Amen. But God is sending this thing your way. Some of you right now are in situations. You're in hardship. You're in trial. Sometimes it seems like God ain't with you. But I'm telling you, the Lord is with you as long as you be with him. As long as your mind and your heart say, God, I still want you. Amen. You may have failed God. You may feel backslidden. You may feel like you can't pray. You may feel like there's no way I'm going to make it. Amen. You may feel like you're facing something that you cannot get through. But God has a purpose and a cause for everything he allows to come our way. How many believe that? Amen. David realized that this is a spiritual battle right here. This ain't about who's got the bigger sword and, and who's more experienced. He said this battle is the Lord's and I know whose it is. I know who's armoring this battle. You got to know, amen, that whatever you're going through, God is the one that's in control of it right now. That faith that you have in God will cause you to get the victory over whatever it is. 
How many believe you can get through this thing? Amen. I believe, amen, there's victory on the other side of this battle. I ain't got to run from nothing. I ain't got to hide from nothing. You can go push full steam. When the Spirit of God is with you, you can go full steam ahead. Amen. God will make a way for you. Let's go on down. I say, I'm scared. I, I ain't going to make it. You can make it. Verse 32. People just lose hope. Yeah, you know, and it's the day when, you know, Peter said, every man's work's going to be tried. But what sort it is? What he says is going to declare. He said, the day is going to declare. And this is the most evil time. I mean, up to. All my lifetime, this is the most evil. You can feel the darkness and the evil that's on people. Amen. You can feel it pressing on you, your mind and your spirit. Amen. You need to have some spiritual time. This is why we preach. Amen. You got to always, you got to have some time alone. Amen. Separate from your routine. Separate from the people in your circle. Separate from your television and your internet. You got to unplug sometime to get along with God. If you want to make it, you will not make it if you don't have some spiritual time along with the Lord. Amen. I like what Sister Paul. That's why, I, amen. I appreciate y'all telling me when it's a, the call said, Brother Michael, it was just like you said. Say, I got alone and I got quiet and God began to talk. I mean, you do what the word is saying. Amen. The word will work for you. Amen. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. This is verse 32. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go out against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a you. What did Paul tell Timothy? He said, Let no man despise what? Thy uh, you. God's got some young men. John said, I write unto you young men because what? You are strong. A lot of times, the older saints look down, but it's God's going to raise up some younger saints that's strong. Don't think all these young people ain't got what we got. God's going to have some young saints that's strong in the Lord. He's going to do a quick work. He's going to do a short work, and he's going to raise up people, and he's going to put something in them that you and I ain't got. Some of these young people, I'm watching, I'm observing. Amen. God raise up somebody. I ain't got to be the big cheese, the big cheese. God can raise up somebody, amen, that can go out and do something that us older folks can't do. Amen. Don't, 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 get, don't get so settled on your style. I've been saved for 32 years. That don't mean nothing with God. Amen. God can raise up somebody. Amen. Been saved for 32 days. But the Spirit of God is on. They got an obedient heart. Amen. They're valiant for the Lord. They want to do something for God. And God can use them. More than some of us old here. Amen. We may know the old way. Amen. But sometimes God can raise up a new crop. Amen. They ain't got all the hangups we got. <laughs> they ain't in the rut. Sometimes we know how to pray, but we trust in our own prayer life. We trust in our own fast and our own dedication. But it ain't you, it's God in you, it's Christ in you. Amen. And sometimes over here, we get to trust in what we can do. Uh -uh, it's still going to be Jesus no matter what. And sometimes young people realize, amen, it ain't me, it's just Jesus Christ. And let God raise up, encourage these young people. Encourage people that's coming in. Amen. Don't tell them they ain't got nothing. To tell. Amen. Go in this time, Mike. Whatever it is God tell you to do, do it with your mind. Oh, child, you need some wisdom. You need to sit down. Amen. You need to just be in this. Amen. So if you feel like getting up and doing something, do something. But I got to say, they got me up. I didn't just sit in church, watch movies on Saturday night. They got me out there in the streets witnessing, knocking on doors, being embarrassed, being ashamed. Ain't that right, Sister Poo? We get busy. And young people, a lot of times they can't live for God because they just stuck in the rut that us old folks in there. Go to church on Saturday. Sit around, gossip on Saturday night. That's what we do. That's, that's what being saved is. Amen. Everybody getting fat, putting on 50 pounds. Amen. Get out there and get busy. Doing that's what saved people do. Amen. We go to church and we eat. That's all we do. That ain't all we do. Amen. So, amen. Don't, don't squash somebody that's got a zeal. I know people with zeal need knowledge, but don't squash the zeal trying to give them knowledge. Try to encourage them. David got some zeal for the Lord. 
He wants to do something. I, I, I can't stand the way things are right now. I can't stand the fact, amen, that the devil is out there defying us and we're running and hiding. And now Saul is trying to tell me that I'm not able to go out against this uncircumcised Philistine because he's got more experience than I got. David ain't buying that. No. David said unto Saul, God's got calls to everything that happens. Yes. Now, you may not understand it because of reason. I might say time and change happens to the Lord. When you are saved, it's more than just time and change. Yes. Amen. The steps of a good man are what did he say? Order. Order. Not just directed, but order means to put it in in advance. That's what order means. When you place your order, you saying, amen, I know what's going to happen. I know what I want to eat or whatever it is. I know what I want to order. Amen. That's to put it. So when God orders yourself, amen, what he's doing is he's setting up things in advance for your life. And I don't believe that things happen to me just by chance. I believe God is directing my steps. I believe God allows things to come in my life for a purpose. He has a cause. He's getting me ready for something. Amen. A lot of times we don't recognize why we're in things, why they happen. Sometimes things are hard to deal with. Yes, sir. Yes. Sometimes things break your heart. Amen. Yes, Amen. I ain't never shed tears. I'm a man. I ain't never shed tears. You shed them. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. Even me in Christ. Sometimes things happen so heartbreaking. Amen. You don't know why in the world God allowed these things to happen. He's allowing them to set you up for something. I believe that. The reason what the place you come to is because God has ordered your steps. And this is what we're seeing here in David's life. David said unto Saul, this is verse 34. I mean, believe that God has predestinated you for something. That God's got a will and a purpose and a plan. There's a cause for everything in your life. Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bird. I used to think this was two separate occasions, but the lion and the bird came at the same time. Now that's just beyond the beyond, isn't it? And took a lamb out of the flock, and I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. God alive. He prepared this situation to get David ready for the lion. That's right, that's right. He prepared a situation where a lion and a bear come out against a man on the same day at the same time and God, the Spirit of God comes on him and he kills both of them and delivers the lamb out of their hand. Why did God do this? He wanted David to have the assurance, amen, that when you go against this giant, I'm going to be with you. He wanted him to know, amen, that if God moved for me back then, God will move for me now. Somebody say, why did God allow that? God is setting you up for something, amen, even your hardest trial, amen, is supposed to let you know, God, if you move for me then, you'll move for me now. It looked like I wouldn't get past that trial back then, but God, you brought me through it. It looked like I wasn't going to make it, God, but you delivered me. Amen. You stirred me up again. Samson said, pray. He was grinding at the mill with his eyes put out, but he prayed, God, strengthen me this one. Hey, God, I'm going through something right here, and I need you to help me, and God strengthened him. Amen. And God will bring you through it. Amen. He lets that hard trial come to show you you can make it through anything. Yes, yes, yes. If God allow it to come your way, yes. many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yes. But the Lord does what? Deliver them out of how many of them? Oh. Ain't, ain't nothing God allowed to come your way that you can't come through. Right. There's a cause. There's a reason. And God is setting David up to realize that this, this big old giant, he's going to be just like the lion in the ground. Yes. If God brought me through that, yes. he'll bring me through this. Oh, yeah. Amen. All y'all afraid, but I ain't afraid. I know in whom I have believed. 
Amen. People are discouraged. People are downcast. Look like God ain't moving. But I know in whom I have believed. I've been in a dark place before. I thank God. Amen. You don't thank God for the way you in it. But I realize, amen, when I'm going through this darkness and this hardness, amen, sometimes I have to think back, Mother Will. I've been in a dark place before. I've been in a hard place before. Amen. And the same God that brought me out of that one is going to bring me out of this one. The same God that came to me and said, pray one more time. The same God that lifted me up when I couldn't help myself. Amen. That same God is still with me. Amen. That same God. It may not look like he's there. It may look like the devil is defying me. It may look like I can't get through with everybody. Ain't no help around. But that same God. Amen. I may boldly say the Lord is my help. I shall not fear what man can do unto me. I'm not afraid. Amen. Of this devil we're facing right now. God is going to send an anointing and a spirit to pour out every stronghold. You be encouraged. There's a call for what you're going through right now. God is going to get this. This giant going to fall. This giant is coming down. That's what you look like. You can't get through. You pray with him faster. My God, that spirit won't break. Hey, Amen. But realize, hey, Amen, that there's an anointing of God. Sometimes you got to call to remember the former days. When you were illuminated. How, how you endured a great fight of affliction. You were made a gaze and sight. Hey, Amen. You were embarrassed. Hey, Amen. But God is with you. You got to learn how to despise the shame. Anybody that lives for God got to have that Hebrews 12. You got to learn how to despise the shame. They will tell you, hang your head down. Uh -uh, don't hang your head down. Once you got right with God, once you've been on this altar, amen, lift up, strengthen the feeble knees. Amen, the hands that hang down. Make straight paths for your feet. Realize God is with me. Amen, I may not feel it. I may not see it, but I'm marching on. I'm going ahead. Amen, everybody else can draw back if they want you. Everybody can stop praying if they want you. Devil can tell me I ain't got no help. I'm all by myself. Hey, man, but the Lord, hey, man, that slew the lion and the bear. The Lord that brought me through that thing 10 years ago is going to bring me through this thing. The same God is still with me. If he anointed me to kill a lion and a bear, hey, man, this thing I'm facing right here ain't nothing compared to what I've been through already. I tell you, you got to come stronger than that. Hey, man, to stop me. I know my God. He knew that what he was facing had a cause to it. He knew that was the reason for what God allowed to come his way. It ain't just time and change. It ain't just me being naughty as I am. This is God working around. I'm going to tell you something. Else. God set up the lion and the bird for Goliath. God set up Goliath with a call. He knew. <laughs> See, we're supposed to be going from faith to faith and from victory to victory. You can't have a victory without a fight. You can't have a victory unless there's a challenge. Unless you go through a challenge, you can't have a victory. You can't grow in faith unless your faith is tried. The lion and the bear set him up for the lion. And the lion is setting him up to get on the path to the throne of Saul. Goliath is the one event that puts him in the national spotlight and gets him ready for the throne. God knows what he's doing. Now God does everything with a cause. I know you don't feel like it sometimes. But everything that happens. I preach sometimes. Sometimes the car just breaks down. I believe it's still got a call. That's right. That's right. I believe there's still something I'm supposed to learn from. That's right. When the washing machine break and flood the whole house, I still believe there's something I'm supposed to learn. Maybe I'm just supposed to learn to buy a new washing machine. <laughs> but I'm supposed to learn. Paul said, everywhere and in all things, I am instructed. Yes. And then he said that in Philippians 4. Everything that I go through, he said, is supposed to teach me something. Yes. God is teaching me something. Maybe it's just teaching me not to murmur and complain because stuff's going to happen. Everything you go through, if, you, if your faith is in Jesus Christ, everything you go through is designed to teach you something about God and about your walk with the Lord. And cause has three applications. An application in the past, in the present, and in the future. 
Sometimes things happen because of mistakes we make. I mean, sometimes things cause other things. In the past, sometimes you read things that you saw. Doesn't mean that God ain't with you. You know, a young woman may get saved. If you got pregnant before you got saved, that baby ain't going nowhere. Even though you're saved now, God has washed you from that sin, right. but still some things linger in your life. I know people don't believe that, but some things linger in your life from your past. Right. It took Paul a lot to live down what he had done to the church. Right. You know, folks didn't believe he was saved. In, the er in his early part from Acts 9 and 10, they didn't want to have nothing to do with him. Amen. Only one of us had something to do with Paul because he still had a past. And sometimes it takes a while to live down your past. But it still has a cause. God still, even though Paul had to live down some things, it still worked in his life for good. Even though it may look like evil. Y'all listen this morning. I'm preaching, teaching. Even though it may look like evil, it can still work for your good. And cause sometimes is something from your past. Sometimes it's something from your present. But it all feeds into your future. What God has ordained for you. Let's look at this past for a minute. And I'm going to tell you something. First thing happened. When you get mad at God or disgusted or discouraged. How many have ever been discouraged? Some of y'all super saying y'all ain't never been discouraged. Y'all just got victory on top of victory. I've been discouraged. First thing they will tell you when you get discouraged is go pick up something you pulled down. Pick up something you've laid down. Bring your past back up. Sometimes other folks bring up your past. It's sometimes it's hard to live down stuff. It's still working for your good. Over here in Philippians. I believe the Lord is directing your life. He's ordering your steps. Now he wants you to learn from the mistakes of your past. But he don't want you to be pulled down by it. I mean the Holy Ghost knows how to teach you a lesson and then cause you to forget about all the pain of your I mean I'm going to hopefully get to Joseph here in a minute but when he had his firstborn son he named him Manasseh because he said God has caused me to forget all my toil and labor in my father's house. And you can forget about it. See, this is where, let me, let me take a pause here. I'll hit the pause, but this is where real forgiveness comes in. Because you're going to always go through things with people. That's right. That's right. Ain't no such a thing as everybody love me and everybody get along. You're going to always have trials with people. Saved people, unsaved people, family people, non-family people. You're going to always have stuff with people. Young people, kid people, brother people, sister people, mama people, daddy people. People going to cause you trouble. That's right. The only way to forgive, Jesus said in Matthew 18, from your heart. Is that what he said? Yeah. It's for God to cause you to forget the pain right. that that person caused. People will hurt you. And they ain't got to lay a hand on you. Sometimes people can hurt you worse with their words than with their hands. I know some of y'all ain't never been wounded by somebody. But people can hurt you worse with their words sometimes. With their, you got to learn how to forget that pain of that thing. Jesus said a woman when she's in labor and travail, she has pain. Is that right? But as soon as she delivers that child, she says she remembers no more the pain because of what? Because of the joy. What did Nehemiah say? He said the joy of the Lord is what? Is your strength. Amen. And when God gives you a spirit of peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, you can forget about the pain of what somebody took you through or the trial you've been through. It may have been a painful trial. Amen. It may have been caused by something. It may have been unnecessary. They may have gone beyond the beyond. They may have been malicious. They may have been trying to hurt you. Amen. But when God gives you joy, amen, you don't worry. You don't remember the pain of it. You may still remember the incident, but you forget about the pain when you see that person. You can love them just like it ain't never happened. You can hug their neck. Amen. And God takes away all that pain and he gives you joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what the kingdom of God is for. It's to cause you to always rejoice in everything to give thanks. I know how to pray. You got to know how to praise God in every situation. Amen. Even when they're beating you for the name of Jesus, God has got to call 
call. Somebody say, ain't no reason for them to take me through. God got a call. One day you may be stoned for the name of Jesus. Amen. You think back and say, God, I remember when Sister Boogie died didn't like me. She lied on me in the church. Took me through. But God, you helped me to forgive. You helped me to love her. God, I can still hug her now, and I can feel, even though my natural mind remember what happened sometime, amen, there wasn't no pain in it, I still loved her, and now God, while they're stoning me, amen, he'll, you'll look up and you'll see Jesus standing on the right hand, and you'll say, Father, lay out the sin of that child, while they're stoning you, you can still forgive them, why? Because you went through something in the past, if you had never had that trial, with Sister Spook died, let's go with him, sister, I don't know who she is. <laughs> You never would have made it. I mean, God is trying to toughen us up. I mean, no, we, we little wimp sometimes. Don't want to come to church. Don't want to, amen, they made me mad. Amen, that ain't the way a Christian is supposed to be. Amen, you are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. You are greater than will ever try, even if there's somebody in the church. See, that's what's wrong with these church people. That's why I'm going to, uh uh-uh, don't go nowhere else. Hang in and stick in there. Church people ain't got no more faults than you've got. Why is the folk that lie on somebody else get so offended with somebody lying on them? You did the same thing. What was that scripture David said? Remember, where thou also had cursed others. Anybody know that scripture? Nobody know that scripture. <laughs> but sometimes we get offended when people do to us what we've done to others. If I won't forgive, I won't be able to forgive somebody. Amen. Ain't much I have to forgive folks for that I didn't need forgiveness for myself. You got to have that in your heart yes, to be able to do this Philippians 3. Oh, yes. Verse 12. Verse 12. Verse 10. <laughs> that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though Paul said I ain't there yet. I haven't arrived y'all. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, I'm still pressing. That I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brother, verse 13, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. If you can only get one thing, you need to get this thing. Forgetting those things which are be. What drags us down is those things that are behind us. You got to know how to leave that trial and walk on away from it and only take the good out of it. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Somebody say, I'm trying to press. Hey Amen. You're not laying aside some of those things. You cannot press forward while you're holding on to stuff that's behind you. It had a cause for its season, but now you got to let that thing go. You can't spend your whole saved life trying to get somebody to apologize to you. Amen. The person that wounded you can't heal you. Don't you don't go hunting down a man that stabbed you on the street corner and say, now you put this hole in there, now you sew it up. <laughs> the person that wounded you can't heal you. Jesus is the only one that binds up the broken heart. Somebody that hurt your heart. Amen. All of us got to look back what we call baggage. You know what I'm saying? Amen. You don't need to be on Oprah Winfrey show or Dr. Phil. Amen. Talking about how your mama raised you. She didn't hug you enough. She didn't kiss you. She beat you too much. Amen. Everybody got some kind of baggage from their childhood. Amen. But Jesus knows how. Amen. There are things you got to make right with people. I ain't saying that. But Jesus is the only one that can heal that brokenness. You don't need, to, you don't need this woman, Elania, to fix your life. I'm going to call her in, hey man, to fix my life. She can't fix your life. Jesus is the only one that can bind up that broken heart. The answer to your brokenness is not in the person that wounded you. You got to love them. You got to make things right with them. But they can't heal you. Jesus in Luke 4, he's the only one anointed by God. People can say, I'm sorry. Y'all been there. They can say, I'm sorry. And you know that they mean it in your mind, but your heart still want to be hurt. Well, you still want to talk about it with somebody. 
You still feel like you've been betrayed, like you've been let down. Amen. But when you get in prayer, you stay there till you pray it through. It may take you a day, it may take you a week, but you keep bringing it up before the Lord. Say, Lord, this is how I feel. Don't try to sugarcoat. A lot of people are you can't pretend with the Lord you don't feel how you feel. Feel about God, I'm mad, and something in my heart won't stay mad. God, they should have done me like they've done me, and I know I ain't right, but I want to stay mad. God, you got to help me. Yeah. I get it, I say, oh, you better get in prayer and talk to God about what's going on. Because you're not going to heaven with bitterness in your heart. You're not going to heaven angry with nobody. Ain't nobody down here. Amen. Oh, you nothing. Amen. God is the one that has to heal. You hold that hurt in your heart. Well, since I met it, I'm going to get back to Philippians. You hold that hurt in your heart. Next thing you know, you're being dragged out into something from your past. You pick it up some. I know I'm preaching right now. You'll go back every time. I've seen it. Time and time again. I'm mad at so and so. Amen. So and so did this to me. Amen. I had somebody tell me, trying to insinuate, amen, that they did what they did because of what so and so did to them. No, you did what you did because of what was in your heart. Amen. Somebody may hurt you. Amen. You didn't go out and start jacking up banks. Amen. You didn't go out there. Amen. And start blowing up the White House. You did what was already in your heart to do. Amen. And you used that excuse. That's why you got to forgive people. Amen. Me getting mad at somebody. God ain't going to take that excuse. God, I was hurting the church. That's why I backslid. Uh -uh. He's done to heal your broken heart. That's why David said in Proverbs, uh, Solomon said, Proverbs 4 23, keep or maintain your heart with all diligence. He said, you got to watch after that thing. He said, because out of it are the issues of life. That means everything in your life is affected by what's in your heart. You cannot have evil in your heart and it don't affect you. You got to learn how to lay some things. God, that's in the past. Hey, man, I learned what I had to learn. Now I'm moving on. Well, there's a call for everything. It ain't that person. It's the God that directs it. It's the God. Sometimes God uses as his tool. Sometimes God, read your Bible. Sometimes God uses evil people as his tool on his people. <laughs> God, why in the world you allow this uncircumcised? Hey man, sometimes God allow people. Well, y'all ain't buying this today. But I'm telling you, I'm preaching this. There's a cause. <laughs> <laughs> there is a reason. Hey man, God wants you to know, hey man, that he's the one directing your life. He had to teach Nebuchadnezzar, you a bad boy, but you ain't that bad. He said, I'm the one that set up kingdoms and kings. And I'm the those that walk in pride. He said, I'm able to obey. And Nebuchadnezzar realized that. But he didn't realize that at first. He said, this is my great battle that I made. God said, your number is coming up. Amen. Sent a word by a prophet. Told him to break off your sins by righteousness. He walked on for another 12 months. God said, God, look at the devil. They're just being successful. Amen. But Nebuchadnezzar, days were number. Amen. And God knew when this time. And after 12 months, he said it again. And instantly, he lost his mind. <laughs> Bible says, fret not yourself. Yes. Why are we saved people pulling our hair out because of evil? Yes. Fret not yourself because of evil. Yes. They shall soon be cut off. Yes. God knows how to deal with your adversary. Yes. You ain't got to fight your own battles. You ain't got to connive how to get even with somebody without going to jail. They will tell you how to get even without going to jail. Yes, he will. <laughs> how to come out with your hands clean. Amen. Fight your own battle. It's the Lord that fights your battle. Amen. God allowed that thing that was a cause. He wanted you to learn something from it. He wanted to humble you. He wanted to teach you something. Now you take your lesson and go on and forget about it. But remember the lesson. Because every test you fail, you got to take it over again. <laughs> I don't care who you are. We think we get out of something. God got out of that street. I got a payday loan and I'm good and free. You ain't out of that trial. You just postponed it. When God got something for you to learn, as long as you're with him, you're going to learn that trial. You're going to learn that lesson. You got to go through that sooner or later. You can postpone, you can get a payday loan, you can mortgage the house, you can do nothing, you can divorce your husband. You know, if you stay with Christ, you can divorce your wife, you can go out and do a whole bunch of But if you stay with Christ, whatever God had intended for you to learn, you're going to learn. That's right. That's right. 
And sometimes the lessons get a little harder. Yes, God, you, you, you wiggly as an eel, you slippery. <laughs> you want to find a way out of it. Sometimes the Lord just wants you to sit still, take it. Sometimes folks cursing you out, you got to stand there and take it. Don't fight back. Ooh, don't say nothing. Even if it's your own kid, sometimes you got to take it. Somebody say, I ain't taking nothing from no kid. I brought you in this world. I'll take you out and I'll repent later. Hey, don't you get it? Hey, sometimes you got to take it from your kids. I know you don't. <laughs> I know their flesh rise up and say, how old do you think you is? Brother, you, hey, sometimes you got to take something even from your kids. When they get wrong. <laughs> I know it's hard. I know. Uh, I know your flesh say, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, this ain't gonna happen." Uh, uh-uh, uh, child. I'm, I'm from North St. Louis. I'll show you something. Every saved person somewhere has to learn how to take stuff, and you have to learn it sometimes from the hardest source. We can take stuff sometimes from people we can walk away from, don't ever have to think about it no more. But people that's in your house. Your child will come back home. They're 35 years old. Got their belly up to your table. Hey, Amen. And they cursing you out. Oh, God in heaven. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know if I can take this long. Hey, Amen. This giant is too big right here. Hey, Amen. I got to pull out that old sister so and so. Hey, Amen. I got some stuff back here that I ain't forgot about from 1975. I can use on you. I got some words that ain't quite been purged out. Devil wants you to go back to your own self. He wants you to revert back, amen, to that man or that woman you were before God saved you. That's why the devil brought that trial. Yes, yes, yes. The kingdom of God, and you've got to be greater That's right. than anything else. You know what we're in right now? What you feel is kingdom is kingdom. Yes. I know it looks like there's natural things going on, but what you are experiencing right now, if you don't receive nothing I said today, receive it. What you're dealing with right now is kingdom against kingdom. The kingdom of the devil is trying to destroy the kingdom of God in you by any means necessary. Yes, 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 yes. God is allowed. Now let's go over to this cause that's present. Hebrews. Give us a little more. Hebrews 12. Now they don't do this no more. Now they just take away your cell phone. When we was kids, we got whooped. I ain't gonna tell y'all how, because my brother-in-law put a little wisdom on me. Don't say certain things, but we was kids in the 70s. Parents were imaginative. <laughs> they found ways to inflict pain on you when you got out of line. Amen. Sometimes it was in the hands. Sometimes it was a household product that was intended for another purpose. Sometimes it came flying in the earth at you. <laughs> but they found ways to correct you. They find ways to let you know that what you are doing right now is inappropriate, son. They didn't sit down and talk to you like you were a little ago. They, 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 they spoke to you in a language you could understand, and everybody understands pain. And I said, not me, bro. I set my children down, and I elucidate to them the benefits of right living and wrong living. Can't buy children. They take all the stuff you give and they steal. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But <laughs> my wife put that in there. I might have left that off, but my wife said, "But the, what's going to what's going to deliver here? The rod of correction." Woo! How many sons of God we got in here? How many of y'all children, when you guys say, you know I, I know I'm a son of God. I know I've been born again. I know I've been born of the water and the spirit, and I'm a son of God. Well, child, you got some correction. Yes, yes. There's a call in the present. Let's go over here. The present, the past has to be forgotten. The present has to be endured. Hebrews 12, verse 5. 
Oh Lord. Four, three, two. I might as well start it. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassionate about with so great a cloud of witnesses who? Everybody in Hebrews 11 who died in the faith, they're looking to us all the same. That's the cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. Paul said in one place, he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it. When? Until when? Until the day of Jesus Christ. He's going to finish what he started. He is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, what did he do? He endured the cross. There was a cause for the cross and then all he could do was endure it. He prayed, God take it away from me. Father, did he pray that? Yes, yes. What did the Father do? He didn't take it away. He sent angels to minister to him and strengthen him yes. but you still got to endure that cross, Jesus. Yes. He endured the cross despising the saints. Sometimes the devil tell you you're just so embarrassed Ain't no way in the world you can get through this. Just hang your head down. You can't go back around these people no more. Jesus had to, they stripped him. He was a modest man. They stripped off all his clothes. That's right. Pugged, spit in his face, plucked off the beard. He had to learn how to lightly esteem the shame he was feeling. Despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God for considering him. What did he do? He endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest she be weary and do what? Faint. Where at again? Before you ever go out there and start drinking, you're going to faint first in your mind. Your mind going to say, what's the use? Give up. That's because you're not considering him. You have not yet resisted under blood. How are you going to give your life to Jesus if you can't even get through this, what you're going through right now? This is what Paul was saying. Ain't nobody trying to kill you. Nothing trying to kill you but that cigarette. <laughs> You're just striving against sin, that old man. But if you feed that new man and starve that old man, he'll die. You got that pack of cigarettes on your table every day you walk by and rub it. I'm just trying to remind myself what God delivered me from. You're just lying to yourself. You're fainting in your mind. Is that right? right. Clean out your house. You have not yet, I don't need that long. Resisting on the blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he received. You want God to receive you? You're going to be scourged. If ye endure, somebody say endure. endure. Chasing. God is doing something. He's dealing with you. You may not want to be dealt with, but he's going to deal with you. God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chases not? But if ye be without chastisement, where of how many are partakers of God's chastisement? Every single son of God. Then are ye bastards and not sons. That means your mama had you and she was not married to the man. And God ain't a fornicator. So that means, like Jesus told him in John 8, ye of your father who? <laughs> if God ain't your daddy, then somebody else is. Bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not, not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chases us after their own pleasure, their own desire, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Verse 11. Now no chastening for the, what's that word? Present. Seem to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, what's the next word? Afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are. Notice these last two words. Exercise their body. 
You may not think Jesus said to heaven and earth pass not one jot or one tittle is going to pass out of law. That means every single word in this Bible means something. You got to allow your trials to exercise you. That's right. Every time you fight back, real against it, resist again, you know, when we were being chased by, I'm going to tell you this, but don't y'all do this. We had to lean over, not by my mama, but by somebody else. We had to lean over the church. Oh, yeah. I said, child abuse, I'm calling the hotline. They ain't interested in no 35 year old case. <laughs> they got too many cases now. We had to lean over the chair and put our hands on the floor. Now, if your hand came off the floor as it was wont to do and covered your posterior, that lid didn't count. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. So now you got to well put your hand and you still got to get that one that you shielded. You got to be exercised by. Sometimes we're in a trial, but we do everything to mitigate the pain. We do. We self-medicate. We talk to folks. We grumble and complain. We go around and spread stuff. Uh-uh. That's not enduring. You got to be exercised by your trial, which means you got to be a doer of the word, even when you're in your trial. God does not excuse you going out downgrading your brother just because you and your brother have a disagreement. Well. I'm just meddling today. But you're not being exercised by your tribe when you take matters into your own hand and say, I'm going to fix this somehow. I'm going to strike back somehow. That's not being exercised by it. Being exercised by it. Woo. I mean, want to be like Jesus. As a lamb before the shearers is done, so opened he. God, if, we could, if James said, if any man learn how to bridle his tongue, he is what kind of man? A perfect man and able to bridle his whole body. We just got to say something to somebody. Child, you know what Sister Ingram did to me. God in heaven, she called herself a preacher. You know what Brother Ricky done to me? What kind of example is he as an assistant? We got to say something to somebody, but a lot of times the Lord wants you to just shut up. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We don't call the person that's going to tell us, child, let's just pray for them and love them and endure it. We, child, we call somebody that we know got something against them with us. So we can chew on them together. Now David said, come magnify the Lord with me. But we call on the phone. Say, come turn down my brother with me. Let us join together and chew on behind his back. He had a right to it. You're not being exercised by it. You got to go through that trial again. We go over somebody and say, the pastor is teaching today. <laughs> If you do not go through that trial, you have to go through it again. Yeah, yeah. Ain't no sense getting mad. You're a son of God. You're going to go through your chest time. Amen. 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 Now, how did David learn? Let's go back a little bit. Man, this first sermon just gets good. It is. First sermon 26. I'm going to try to wrap it up, y'all, but it's just too much for one afternoon. Anybody bring a sandwich? First Samuel 26, verse 9. Look at this. I'm going to tell you something. Somebody may make you mad, but if God is with them, your best bet is to leave alone. You may get mad at Brother Turner. I say, what do I do? Shut up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And there's other folks that's anointed that ain't Brother Turner. I say, what do I do when I'm mad at them? Shut up. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, if your works are righteousness, God will avenge you. And you may not always know he's done it. See, we want to bend this where we can feel justified. But God ain't like that. He ain't interested in your flesh feeling vindicated. Vengeance belongs to one person. That's to him, not to you. 
Now notice what David learned over here in 1 Samuel 26. Verse 9. Now he's got Saul. I guess Saul is hunting him. He ain't hunting Saul. Saul is hunting him. That's right. I didn't hear this sister say this, but somebody told me she said it. She ain't heard no more. But she said she got in a fight with another sister and said God anointed her to beat that woman's very end. There ain't no such a lie. God, God, God anoints you to take wrong. He anoints you to hold your peace. He anoints you to pray through. But he will not anoint you to beat up somebody in the church because you don't like their way. We got to be careful in the house of God. Because God has chosen people. And you don't want to put your hand on Because he said, touch not my anointing. And David knew that. Yes. Over here, 26 verse 9. And I got Saul trapped in the cave. And Abishai wants to kill him. Just let me strike him one time. I won't hit him again. It'll only take me is one shot. Sometimes <laughs> you just, if I can just hit him just once, God, just let me punch him one time. I won't punch him twice. Just let me hit him once. David realized, uh -uh, that ain't the Spirit of God. And David said to Abishai, let me go to verse 8. Let me get this flesh in here with this. Then Abishai, then said Abishai to David, God hath delivered thine enemy into life. Sometimes it looked like that. Sometimes I'm saying there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And God put that in there twice to let us know, confirm everything that looked like is God or way out, ain't God or way out. Something, sometimes the devil will open the door for you, tell you take this route, but the Spirit of God knows what's God and what ain't God. I mean, we need to hear that voice. God has to live that thine enemy into thine hand. Everything that say God ain't God. This day, now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee. I was tired of running. He's a man of war. He want to fight. All David's doing is running. <laughs> running and hiding. That's all he's doing. I tell you, you got to have it. He, he ain't afraid to fight, but he knows this is not the time to fight. Now the a man of war. Let me smite him, I pray thee. One, one prophet said, they are for war, but I'm for peace. Let me smite him with the spirit even to the earth at once. I will not smite him the second time. And David said to Abishai, destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? David said, furthermore, as the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him, or his day shall come. Notice this verse 10. His day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. When did David learn this lesson? Let's go back to chapter 25. That's right. I mean, everything has a call. God sets stuff up, gets you ready for everything. I believe every major trial God has prepared us for That's in advance. Right. Right. If we exercise by things. He don't let nothing take you by surprise. The real Holy Ghost is supposed to show you things to come. It may not be an open vision. It may not even be in a dream. He may not speak to your ear. But when that trial come up, you realize he has already prepared you for it. That's what the Holy Ghost is supposed to do. And now that David is in a situation in chapter 26, it looks like this is my deliverance. But it was not God. David learned that over here with Nabal in chapter 25. Nabal shears were out shearing sheep. And David and his men were a wall to them night and day. Washed over them. Didn't do them no harm. Even the men testified to Abigail. Say, while we were conversing with them, we didn't lose nothing. They were a wall to us. They treated us good. David sent word to Nabal. Say, give us some food, man. We washed over your folks. Nabal said, who is David? 
Who is the son of Jesse? There'll be many servants that break away from their master. Shall I take my bread and my water and give it to this man? And he talked rough to him, sent him back. David, when he got, when he got the word, <laughs> and he's been running and hiding, and he's ready for a good fight. Everybody strap on your sword. We're going down to Nabal's house, and by this time tomorrow, if anybody that pierced against the wall is alive, God, I'm going down and I'm killing everybody. Ain't that what he said? <laughs> Reason about David said, I'm killing everybody in the house. Amen. The servant that heard it told it to Abigail, and he knew what was up. Man, she made ready, got five sheep together, already dressed, got some cheese, got some fish, got some rolls of bread, rolled on down that mint, they bowed down to the ground, say, let him send me on me, as his name is, so is he. Father is in his heart, Father is his name, don't go down there and kill everybody, David. He, she, she said, God has kept you this day from shedding blood. And those words, she talked for a minute. She didn't just say one or two. She said, she talked for a minute, because she realized they was all dead. And David said, God bless you, woman. Say, you have kept me this day. She said, David, you don't want this to be a grief of mind to you when you're sitting on the throne. I mean, she spoke wisdom. That was God talking to this woman. But David saw ready, and he's about ready to kill. And David, remember what David said to Abishai. So Abigail went on back home. Nabal was drunk. She didn't tell him what she had done. Till the next day when he was sold. And she told him, this is what I did. David was ready to kill everybody up in here. This is what I did. And, I, and the Bible said, <laughs> Nabal's heart turned to stone when he heard it. And 10 days later, he was dead. God killed him. Amen. When David heard that, amen, he realized then and there, every enemy I got, God is going to deal with. I don't have to deal with it myself. Amen. God knows how to deal with everybody that rise up against me. So when he found Saul in the cave, he knew I ain't got to touch him. He said one day he's going to die. Amen. God's going to take See, you got to realize that the Lord, he'll fight your battle. You ain't got to take up for yourself. There's a God that will take up for you. When people rise up against you, don't worry about it. Amen. You got to live. That will avenge you and take up for you. David realized that because of what he went through with me. He was prepared for Saul. I'm closing. Some of y'all won't fight back. Don't fight back. I'm trying to be like Jesus. I said, He was a son of David. Let me be like David. Be like Jesus. Jesus is the perfect. Over here, the lamentation. There's a cause for God allowing you to yeah. go through everything you go yeah. through. There's a cause. Yes, there is. It's not just time and change. Lamentation. Now, I read to you Jeremiah 29. God's going to give us an expected, and I'm going to expect to get back to that. But this is uh, Jeremiah lamenting. That's what the book of Lamentation is. He's lamenting because, you know what he's lamenting because? He's lamenting because everything he prophesied has come to pass. Notice what he says here in 3 and 33, talking about the Lord. Let's look at verse 31. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercy. For he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. Let me leave that there and go over here to Ezekiel. This is a good scripture. 14. This is where all this message came from. This is Ezekiel 14. Look at this verse 19. Ezekiel 14 and 19. But if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood, and cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, says the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. For thus says the Lord God, how much more when I send for my four sword judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noise of beasts and the pestilence that cut off from it man and beast. Yet behold, their end shall be left a remnant. God's going to have people. Somebody's going to make it through these storms. That's right. There shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you and you shall see their way and their doings, and ye shall be confident concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem. I mean, God will afflict you, but he will comfort you. Even concerning all that I have brought upon it, and they shall comfort you, 
when ye see their ways and their doings, and ye shall know that I have not done it without cause. All that I have done in it, saith the Lord. Let's look at one more scripture over here in Genesis 45. We all know the story of Joseph. Hated by his brother, right. sold into slavery, right. lied on, said he raped Potiphar's wife, put in prison. But look at this man of God. Genesis 45. I know a lot of people read 50 and around in there. I want to read this 45. This is what I want you to take with you this morning. This 45, let's start at verse 4. Of Genesis 45. I'm closing with this. And Joseph said unto his brother, this is after he has revealed himself to them. This is down in Egypt. And after he's gone through all of that, Benjamin in the cup, putting one of them in jail, sending them back, coming back. Now he's revealed to them. Notice this verse 4. And Joseph said unto his brother, come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves. You ever comfort somebody that needs you wrong? Yeah. I heard two yells and a couple of grunts. <laughs> ah, let them suffer. Amen. God is teaching them a lesson. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta comfort people yeah. even though they were wrong. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Amen. I'm gonna be all right. Don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah. I mean, that's what the Holy Ghost does. Yeah. Flesh wants him to suffer. Good for him. <laughs> now therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hitherto. Hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the fame of men in the land, and there are yet five years, in the which there shall be neither earring nor harvest. God sent me before you, notice how he's talking, to preserve your posterity in the earth. And to save your lives by a great deliverance. That's what I want to get to this verse 8. So now, notice these next four words. Somebody read them for me. It was not you. Oh, Lord, help. You got to realize that it ain't the person that's coming against you. It ain't always just the devil. God allowed it. This is what Joseph realized now. He, he's a human being. He had his tired days, no doubt, of depression and heartache, being angry back at his brothers. But now he is comforting them. And notice what he said. He said, it wasn't you. Oh, Lord, help. Y'all didn't get that verse 8. But that, that struck me this morning. So now it was not you that sent me hither. But who did it? But God. And he had made me a father of Pharaoh. God's going to bring you out of everything. And Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. You got to look past the person and realize this is God working in my life. Romans 8 28 says all things. Is that the Bible? Yes. Work together for good. Yes. Is there not a cause? Give a lot of hands now for the word of the praise. Father, we are here today, all of us, as your sheep. Lord, we haven't already attained. We're not already perfect. But we're following after. We want to apprehend that for which also we've been apprehended. Lord, you apprehended me 32 years ago. God, you apprehended some of us five or ten or two years ago. Called us out of darkness. Called us to be born again, to be sons of God. Lord, we made mistakes. God, we've got things wrong, but we realize, Lord, that everything that you've allowed to come our way has a cause and has a purpose. God, you set up things. You set up even our trials and our hardship. You allow the enemy to come against us, sometimes successfully, it looked like, but you're working in our lives. We acknowledge you in all our ways. You told us in Proverbs 3, you would direct our path. Help us in every circumstance and situation. To acknowledge you that it's God. No matter what the enemy is doing, our life is in your hands. That it's not the person, it's not the individual, it's not the trial. It's always you. Lord, you allow these things. Lord, we learn from them. We're growing. God, and we're coming, becoming stronger 
through prayer and seeking you. And we pray that you would touch every heart through the word of God on the day. We hide it in our home. We thank you for our trials and for our hardship, for our tests, for the making us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord one more time. Does anybody need prayer? Amen. Amen. If you need prayer for anything, I'm going to ask you to come on up at this time. We believe the Lord will work things out. Amen. Even though we thus speak, you know, the Lord knows how to change situations. Amen. Pour down strongholds. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 